Hi guys, welcome to our video, 0.5, Physical Separation of Matter. In this one, we're going to look at different ways of separating mixtures. And right, the first one is what's called filtration. And this is something that you all know, even if you don't think you know it, you probably know it. Now, filtration is going to be useful for separating certain types of heterogeneous mixtures. Right, so let's say you're going, you have pasta, right? You boil up your pasta for a while, and now you want to separate the pasta from the boiling water. You pour it through a colander, a sieve, a strainer. That is also a type of filter. Now in the lab, if we have a container with, say, sand and water in it, and we want to separate it, we pour it through a filter. And the filtrate, the water, flows through the filter paper with anything that's dissolved in it and any undissolved particles are going to remain on top of the filter paper just like your water right passes through the colander all the way through and the spaghetti gets caught in the colander so examples like the first one I said sand and water if I have sandy water I can filter it and I have water and sand when you make tea or coffee, you're filtering something. Now, when we make coffee, right, we have the coffee sitting in the filter already, and we pour water through it, right? Here's the filter, here's the coffee grounds, we pour water through it, but it is still filtering because the coffee grounds stay behind. With tea, you have it in a bag that you dip in the water, water flows through the filter, it goes in and it goes out, and the tea stays behind. But they're both types of filtration. All right, the next one we're going to look at is evaporation. So here we have something, some type of heat source. And evaporation is good for separating homogeneous mixtures, where it's the same throughout. So it's going to separate the solute, which is the dissolved solid. So let's say it's salt water. So the solute is the salt. And we'll do a lot more of this later in the year the solvent is the water. So if we want to separate salt from salt water, right, pouring it through a filter is not going to do any good because the salt's dissolved. But when we evaporate it, the liquid goes away, becomes water vapor, and the salt is left behind. The solvent, the liquid, the water, boils off, and the solute, in this case the salt, is left behind. And the example I gave you was boiling salt water. Next one we're going to look at is called distillation. And that's also going to separate homogeneous mixtures, but specifically it's going to separate liquids with different boiling points. Because if I were to try evaporation, both liquids ev will evaporate and they're both gone. So in this case, I'm just going to collect in this picture here, Right, we have salt water, we boil it off, and instead of the water vapor leaving, going into the atmosphere, it gets collected, it goes into this tube, and condenses it back to water. So the salt stays behind, the water boils, becomes a gas, gets condensed, cooled, becomes a liquid again, and ends up in the receiving flask. I right, hopefully we'll get to do an example of distillation later in the year. It's actually pretty cool to see. Another one, which you should have done in biology, is chromatography. That's another way of separating homogeneous mixtures. And it separates particles based on size and solubility. So, right, here we have a situation where you have ink. All right, put an ink on here, put it down the chromatography paper in the liquid, and the liquid will move up, and it'll actually carry the ink with it. The bigger particles will move slower. The smaller particles of this will move faster, and you end up with a little streak of different colors. And the substance that you're separating out gets separated into the colors that make it up. All right, question time. Go ahead, see if you can answer these two, and we will talk about them in class.
Alright, that brings to the end of 0.5. I will see you guys at school.